Okay, so this is how much? 1500? Hey guys, Matt here with 1HP and I'm a doctor of physical therapy and orthopedic clinical specialist and have been working in esports for the past five years treating at least 500 plus cases associated with gaming injuries of the lower back, the wrist, the hand, the neck, the shoulder. And today I'm going to be reacting to the recent use of the Herman Miller gaming chair priced at $14.95. And I'm going to be reacting to the promotion video, then digging into the features, the adjustments, the design and specifications to give you guys my overall verdict of the chair. And I want to say that I don't actually have the chair, um, but these are my thoughts as an expert in the gaming and wellness sphere of esports. And overall, I have been a fan of Herman Miller products and feel they have done a really great job in their design. And as my colleague Kaylin mentioned, we really appreciate the attention to ergonomics and biomechanics going into the actual design. So I want to highlight those and offer my perspective about the chair, its potential benefits, and then a few things that I think we should think about moving forward to understand if it's worth it to buy this chair. All right, let's go over this chair. We have the Herman Miller X Logitech G and body gaming chair. I will go over all these features, the adjustments, the design, the specifications, but let's first start with the cool video. Let's see what they have to offer here. Innovation. Mm -hmm. It's that moment where science leads to performance. It actually looks pretty badass. As world leaders in gaming, and I really appreciate the and gaming pioneers of ergonomics. aesthetics and marketing associated with this. We've joined forces to know how important aesthetics are to uh, gaming game equipment and gamers. So, Combining I like it. decades of research and design, specifically to advance the way you play. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Designed to support your body's mechanics. Right. Fully customizable to your spine's alignment. I do really like this feature of customizing your spine's alignment. Um, Creating adjustability is probably one of the most important factors to consider when purchasing a chair, mainly because it has to be adaptable for everyone's individualized difference in morphology, your shape, your size, your hip width, your positioning you pelvis width, everything associated with your own body. So I love that there's some adjustability. Optimize your vantage. Master love it. Your love setup. it. Some good marketing here. Play advanced. All right. All right. Um, I think there's definitely some evidence that could support improving your performance through better posture, although I really think it depends on how the user utilizes the chair and depends depending on their own education surrounding uh, the product once it's received it can be sort of marginally beneficial or just placebo but overall I think I really like the marketing design of this video the marketing design of the chair um, I think it looks really cool all right so let's actually get down into the discussion of the features the adjustment design specs as well as finally touching on the price point. Um, first thing I wanna go over is of course the features. And it says here, designed with the input of more than 30 physicians, PhDs in biomechanics, vision, physical therapy, and ergonomics. I love research, so I'm so glad that they consulted some experts to create the design of some of these features and factors uh, for their chair. Let's start with the first one, their enhanced gaming seat. and. Uh, I did a little more further research here and I'll touch a little bit about the cooling foam but it looks like in their chair they have two spring layers. They have one matte layer and they have one foam layer with this sink fabric that I think is a little more for durability, right? It's that polyester tested for abrasion. Um, primar that fabric is going to be primarily to help with the longevity of the chair. I do think the multi-layer design that they discussed 
that's aerated with durable springs is likely to be beneficial in that it provides some tactile feedback or feedback pushing back into the skin underneath your buttocks or your thigh to help you maybe be reminded of sitting in a better position, a more upright position rather than just sinking into it like more traditional gaming chairs. Uh, I think the cooling foam is interesting. They said it's copper fused cooling foam technology that prevents heat buildup while you game. I think that's definitely interesting to be sit to say the least. There might be some research to support this. We know that copper um, is a great conductor of heat as a metal um, and depending on its placement in this cooling foam, especially if it's evenly dispersed and there's some aeration as mentioned, I think it's very possible that it can help distribute heat or excessive heat build up with prolonged sitting. I'm just glad that it wasn't mentioned that there's antimicrobial effects or some of the other effects that have been mentioned with the compression sleeves and garments, which has been shown in the research to be not beneficial. The copper does not do much. It's the compression that is beneficial. So overall, I think, hey, the cooling foam could be cool. I think um, with the research, I, I think it's very possible that it can help with cooling and distribution and disbursement of heat. So awesome. Okay, next up, I think we should talk about the backrest, which includes the even pressure distribution, the posture fit spinal support the back fit adjustment, which actually allows you to modify the angle of this a lumbar area to adjust for different curvatures of the spine or different conformations of how you'd like to sit in the chair. I love that they have this even pressure distribution. Uh, let's touch a little bit about this posture fit spinal support. They have a little more of this arching in the lower back, as you can see here. And their, their reasoning is to promote this standing position uh, for the lower back where your chest is open and your pelvis is tilted slightly forward because that is your strongest posture. And there is definitely some biomechanical research to support that. I'm gonna link one in the, descri the description that says that the position that can withstand the most stress in this axial load, which means top down, so holding our bodies up against gravity, is in this position of two degrees tilted forward and anterior pelvic tilt, which creates this slight arch in the lower back. And that is definitely the, and likely the research that they were um, referencing when designing and making this decision of that natural curvature of what the chair will assume. But I, I do think it's important that we mention, hey, we have muscles, we have um, the complex nature of our neuromuscular system that we have to com consider and the ability of our pelvis to rotate to stabilize a lot of the axial or gravity related forces when we're sitting for long periods of time. So um, I would say how we sit is definitely uh, a lot more important and how we utilize the muscles around our lower back is a lot more important than um, this ability to push us into this anteriorly uh, pelvic tilted position. But to, e even with that here, I think the underlying biomechanics is supported and it makes sense how they're marketing it. I do think it can also potentially be beneficial in slightly reminding you that you should be sitting in this more upright posture. So there's nothing wrong with this. It's just, hey, there's a, a lot more that we can consider as it relates to uh, lower back health. And let's talk now about the back fit adjustment, which is really cool because it can actually change the lordotic curvature or the curvature of this chair right here, probably with these different um, joints uh, along the back of the, the chair here. And as you can see here, it looks like it can straighten or arch a little more. And um, as I mentioned in the reaction video or the video earlier, I love this. I love the ability to slightly modify this lumbar curvature um, because it allows us to account for the varied body morphology that can help us maintain this neutral or slightly anteriorly pelvic tilted lumbo pelvic position. But I also want to say that as we sit over time, we typically move into this position of lumbar flexion where our pelvis is tilted back um, due to muscular inactivity or associated with how we are set up around the chair. Uh, 
really depending on the desk, the desk height, the chair height, how might that impact uh, where your legs are, if your legs are hanging, because that can also influence whether or not your pelvis will be uh, tilted back. There's a lot of different factors to consider here, but the back foot adjustment is nice because it can prevent this or increase the rounding at the lower back there to remind us that, hey, we need to sit upright. So I think that's a, a nice little thing, a nice little adjustment. I do think it can be found in a quite a wide variety of other chairs. It's not anything new that has been done. Um, the even pressure distribution is a nice touch. I think, yeah, due to its design, it's likely reducing some of the extra pressure at a lot of our bony prominences, like maybe some of our mid-back, some of our butt, that will help prevent what we call pressure sores if we happen to be sitting for 8 to 10 to 12 to even in the 14 hour range where that we might feel as hey some minor bruising when we touch sensitive areas after we've been sitting for a while so I think that's all really cool okay third let's get into the discussion of the armrest the seat depth and the seat height um, all these are actually pretty great functions here Standard to many if not all gaming chairs out there because you need to have adjustability to fit to your environment to fit to you to fit to your desk um, And depending on how to you decide to sit with your armrest and how much desk space you have You may not use them. Uh, so it's good that there's a lot of vertical adjustability here uh, for the armrest. It looks like they have uh, based on this description in the specifications you have about a five inch difference in the height of the armrest and as well as a 4.5 inch seat height adjustability difference that allows a lot of confirmations to help you fit more naturally into your desk which i think is awesome and as i mentioned before adjustability is everything adjustability is king because everyone's desk is going to be slightly different in height and we need to be able to at least if we want to use our armrests we can or if we don't want to use it it needs to be go low it needs to go low enough and there's often been a lot of issues associated with that with gaming chairs and with just other office chairs that have been used in the gaming space yeah let's uh let's talk about the seat depth i think it's awesome that we can adjust the seat depth because everyone's butt to posterior knee length is a little different especially when we're sitting upright so that adjustability can help us have one better pressure and uh, equal distribution of pressure under our butt when we're sitting for long periods of time but also prevent excessive pressure right over here underneath our thigh that can lead to other issues of impaired circulation um, so pretty great that they have that adjustable seat height here hey that's what every single chair has um, i think uh, the the seat depth I th it's pretty unique i haven't seen this in too many chairs but i, I know that some other chairs have it um besides that i think that's the main specs that we can talk about right they have posture fit the, the adjustable seat depth the tilt limiter which is probably discussing the amount of tilt going back um, while maintaining the angle of the backrest no assembly required and the cooling foam which we mentioned earlier great now okay one of the last things i want to review are the frequently asked questions because i think it's important right as you guys probably are reviewing this chair with this video a little bit too we want to know how it's different from the original body chair i think the additional layer of fo foam is the main difference um, that helps you helps keep you cool and supports your posture okay i really like that they don't have a headrest and the lumbar support i've and pretty much in agreement with Herman Miller here. They've definitely done the research. Majority of chairs will not need a headrest because you should be maintaining an active enough mid back or a general spine position when sitting to properly position your neck. How we position our lower and mid back influences the position of our neck. As you can see, if I'm sitting rounded, my neck is forward a little bit. If I'm sitting upright, my neck is naturally more upright. And in general, if you do want to lean back and rest against the backrest of the chair, you don't want this big bulging neck rest or neck pillow that pushes you into this forward head position that a lot of gaming companies and gaming chairs have, I think, been faulted in doing so, um, especially also with the wings. 
that pushes us into this rounded shoulder position and that I don't think is a great idea. Um, also, they don't need a lumbar pillow because they already have that natural curvature in the lower back that can be adjusted, which, as I mentioned, is, is great is individualized and specific in nature to the different morphology and shapes of our bodies um and yeah it doesn't support line sync now but maybe later right so that there's some cool lighting but let's get to one of the most controversial points about this chair it is the price point of fourteen hundred ninety five dollars so about fifteen hundred dollars and what do i think about this so what do I think about this? I'm sorry, Herman Miller. I do think that this is a little too overpriced, specific to gamers, and is probably more of a luxury chair for more in most individuals. I do think everything that you guys have offered here is pretty amazing. Um, it's definitely supported by evidence. Um, I love the adjustability of the lumbar support. Love that you guys don't have a neck pillow or a lumbar pillow that's additive. I love the amount of adjustability in the armrest height and actually the design of the seat bucket that is not only adjustable in depth but it's not too deep because that creates a lot of that flex or rounded or posteriorly pelvic, uh, pelvic tilted positions that I often see all the time due to how soft these chairs are. So I, I really think that the benefits in this specialized design of the gaming chair, namely the enhanced cooling seat, the lumbar backrest with the arch adjustability, that pressure distribution of the backrest can be found on a lot of the chairs out on the market. And at a certain threshold with chairs, it's just good enough. And everything that you're paying for it is probably just for the brand itself. Um, we will definitely 1HP definitely will go into specific review of a lot of different chairs with our perspective in the near future but at this moment I really don't have any consistent recommendation for a gaming chair but believe as a gamer there are things that we should consider so I'll help you understand at least what you should be looking at and then we will come out with a guide ourselves that's stepwise in nature take some measurements of your own surrounding and your own body into account so that you can make the best overall decision for your health and your budget okay okay let's now talk about what we should be considering when we're purchasing a gaming chair first we need to consider the why you know what are you purchasing what are you purchasing the chair for is it for comfort is it for performance and if it is for performance sorry it's only going to be marginal in nature is it for health what is more important for you um, if it is for health then I think it's really important for us to understand a little more about the bigger picture, which I'm going to highlight here. A chair alone will not provide a long-term relief for any orthopedic condition surrounding our bodies. And why? Because there's so much more to consider when it comes to our health and our performance. And I would say if I could show you guys in terms of distribution of importance, ergonomics with the chair is maybe 10% of the picture. Posture associated with using the chair is 10%. A lifestyle and habits with gaming is 40%. And your physical conditioning is another 40%. So it's maybe one tenth of where we should direct our efforts when it comes into gaming health. Um, but let's speak to some of the reasons why there is that distribution. So our physical health, especially for the musculoskeletal issues influencing our lower back, our neck and shoulder, and even our wrists, are influenced not by just how our ergonomic chair influences our body position, but also the neuromuscular control of all of the muscles surrounding the spine, the pelvis, the shoulder blade, and our neck. The more we're able to control these muscles while we're sitting and with regular exercise, the more we're able to impact or prevent the load on a lot of the commonly irritated tissues that cause pain. Two, there's flexibility, strength, endurance of these muscles that are often the consequence of us sitting for long periods of time, right? And with specific exercises, we can address a lot of these physical consequences that result from sitting for too long, let's say in this rounded position, which often leads to hamstring tightness that leads to more potential back pain because it will pull on your lower back into this rounded flex position and that 
constant pulling stress of the lower back can lead to higher risk of tissue irritation or pain in the lower back. So addressing our strength, addressing our flexibility, addressing our control of the muscles around the lower back, that's the physical health. That's a, the 40% that I mentioned. And then there's the activity itself, right? Us sitting that influences all of those physiologic factors, right? I, when we are sitting in a long period of time for a certain position, it can create that stiffness. It can create muscular inhibition. It can create lack or poor control of the movement systems of our body. And we've been told so many times before how prolonged sitting is detrimental to a lot of the physiologic systems of our body in terms of reduced metabolism, poor circulation, reduced energy, and that causes stiffness or pain somewhere. And we've all felt that. I know we've all felt that as gamers. And we can obviously do a lot of things to address the lifestyle and our habits around gaming. If we get up every now and then, and there's been research to show that, hey, getting up even just five minutes in the hour can reverse a lot of the blood pooling in our legs and i'm sure there's going to be more and more research specifically around gaming to show that if we incorporate movement at steady times or structured times throughout gaming we can see this improvement or prevention of a lot of the physical issues that we experience uh, from just not being aware of our habits and our lifestyle around gaming so that's the other 40 percent and then and I guess as the last thing, the posture that I didn't really mention but is included in the physical health discussion is also the 10%. So how are we actually sitting in our chair and how does that impact the load for different tissues of the front of our hips, the lower back, the deeper tissues of our spine? How does it influence that? And if we sit in an over arch position versus a rounded position versus a rounded shoulder position versus set back position, those can all influence it. And sometimes a chair does make it easier, but you have the control to position your body either way. So that is definitely an important thing. And I just want to say, if you think about it, if you are sitting in the most optimal gaming chair for 24 hours straight, that is not going to be helpful for you. Right? You need to be able to move regularly. You need to be able to control your body because you want to go eat. You want to go exercise. You want to go do other things and not have an increased risk of pain as a result of that. Those things are way more important. Um, so again, the sort of distribution of importance, I would say, is 10% ergonomics, 10% posture associated with the chair use. 40% lifestyle and habits around gaming and then 40% physical conditioning and that's no way the actual distribution for every individual or product but it should and does reflect the overall importance of what we should direct our efforts towards to improve our gaming health and ultimately as I mentioned the chair should be good enough good enough meaning with its ergonomic features, it doesn't make more of a difference to have a better chair. Once you check certain boxes uh, with individualizing to yourself, that's fine. And I don't think the, the good enough threshold for pricing is at $1,500. I think it actually is probably closer to $250 to $300. But we will dig in more to that. Okay, the second thing we have to consider is ourselves. And this means... Understanding your own body weight and relative body morphology, the shape, to ensure that it matches the specific measurements of your chair. You also need to be able to fit into it well and should probably take measurements of your, of your hip width, your, your pelvis width, so that you can make sure that you're buying to the correct fit or buying to the correct sizing of the seat bucket and the arms, arms rest with distance and all of those distance supported with an actual chair i think that secret lab actually does a decent job with this and that they have based on your weight relative seat bucket sizes will work for certain individuals so they do a great job of already categorizing some of the um, individualized morphologies and then choosing a chair based on that um, i think additionally we considering ourselves means the desk, right? And our own height that can all affect our position and how we sit, right? Based on our own height and body measurements when we're sitting upright from our butt to the back of our knee. How's that distance? Does it match with the seat depth of the chair? 
Is the chair adjustable to match that? Will our feet be hanging considering the height of the chair at its lowest and its highest point? So will we need a footrest? And all of those actually impact once you're actually sitting down. Am I going to be rounding or not or overly extended in my lower back? And that is all important because as I mentioned, how you sit in your chair really influences the actual load that goes on to the individual tissues that are really commonly known to cause pain. So depending on all the answers to the questions of, you know, our desk, our desk depth, our desk height, our own individualized body measurements that can influence a lot of things differently. So, so considering the two categories of thought, considering ourselves as well as considering the why, it can help us make that better decision for our investment. And I think typically spending less than 300 can help you achieve similar health outcomes uh, when comparing to this Logitech G uh, Herman Miller collaboration chair. Again, I love it. I think it's a great chair. Um, but as I mentioned, the chair is just one component of our gaming health. And if you're moving, exercising, taking breaks, and mindful of your postural control while you're sitting, it doesn't matter if you're in a $5,000 multi-joint massage, cooling, intermittent compression, osmosis hydrating chair, or just a sub-300 chair that hits all the check marks with ergonomics. What matters is what you do with the rest of that picture, that 90% I talked about. Uh, but again, that is what I think about the chair. I think overall it is a great chair. It is evidence backed and evidence based in a lot of its many, if not all of its claims, pretty much all of its claims, uh, minus maybe the slight mention of increased performance, which is definitely arguable in its nature. Um, but besides that, it's an awesome chair. And I guess if you have the money, go ahead. It's a luxury, luxury chair. But I do think uh, there's 300 to 400 dollar chairs that hit all the same basic ergonomic check marks that uh, we will go over in our piece um, but those are pretty much adjustability the ability to adjust to the desk depth desk height um, your own individual bodies shape your body width um, your femur height your femur length your thigh length um, quite a few different factors but um, if it checks those boxes and you know doesn't have a neck rest, doesn't have an extra fat pillow for your lower back, then it's a good enough chair.